Today I'm out cruising on the Union Canal and I wanted to make a vlog about boat life. I've done vlogs about the farm and about business and that kind of thing but the other half of Narrowboat Farm is a project to create moorings at Narrowboat Farm for people who have boats whether they live on the boats or whether they use the boats for fun or for charity or for trips. Uh, and coming from someone who lives on a boat myself I wanted to share what my favourite things are about living on a boat so hope you enjoy the vlog let's get going. So I think my favourite thing about living on a boat is the environment you get to live in and the range of environments you can live in as well. We're out cruising on the Union Canal in a fairly secluded countryside section but if you wanted to you can go all the way into Edinburgh for a weekend or stay in Edinburgh for a week or two like we do when the Edinburgh Festival is on. Likewise you can go all the way into Glasgow and you can take your home with you which is obviously has its benefits. You don't need to book any accommodation. You don't need to sort anything or crash on anyone's floor. You've got your home there with you and you can pick and choose. And you know, if you moor up somewhere, you don't really like it. All you do is untie yourself and move on to somewhere else. So the flexibility and also the diversity of environments, I think that's definitely my favorite thing about living on a boat. <laughs> One of the most common questions asked when you say you live on a boat is, isn't it cold in winter? Well it can be cold if you let it be cold, but if you've got the stove going like I have next to me here, you can be super toasty in the boat. The thing with narrow boats is like the name suggests, they're only about seven foot wide and about seven foot tall. So it's a really small space to heat. And that makes it really, really effective to heat with just a wood burning stove. And I actually, especially in the winter, I really like being in touch with what the conditions are doing outside. For example, when I get out of bed in the morning, I can tell roughly what temperature is outside. For example, in the winter, if I get outside and you hear a slight crack, that means there's a little bit of ice on the canal, but the boat rocks a little bit side to side, so you know it hasn't been too cold. So you kind of know that, yeah, you'll need to get a fire going, but it might not have to be too full on. Now, if you get out of bed, there's no noise and the boat doesn't move at all, then you know that the canal is frozen thick and you know it's gonna be super, super cold outside. Likewise, you can hear the rain pelting off the roof. Being in a canal boat is kind of halfway between being in a tent and being in a house. You're definitely connected to what's going outside. And not just the extreme uh, weather as well, but when it's really sunny uh, in the summer, especially when the sun uh, comes up early, you hear a cracking noise as well. And that's the steel expanding on the outside of the boat and the wood inside not expanding as much. So you get that cracking noise of when they move apart. So it's really nice being connected to the elements and knowing kind of what you have to do to keep warm, keep comfortable or keep cool or any of those things on the boat. Another one of the really nice things about living on a boat is how close you are to the wildlife. I think that's partly connected to as well how close you are to the environment and what you can hear outside. So for example, I can hear goose anders fishing underneath the boat and you can tell when you hear a certain type of bubble and certain noise, you can pop your head out and you can actually watch them coming back up with fish. You hear geese flying overhead as well. And we get to know a lot of the birds around the boat. There's uh, swans who come round and knock on the side of the boat when they're hungry so they can get a feed as well, which can be a little bit annoying when it's in the middle of the night, but it's really nice being able to kind of be almost accepted slightly by wildlife.
thought it'd be only responsible to balance some of the rosy picture I'm giving about living on a boat by talking a little bit about when it can be quite challenging. When you're living on a boat, you're you're living, you're not quite off grid, but you're disconnected from a lot of the things you take for granted in a flat. You're disconnected from an endless supply of water. You're disconnected from an endless supply of heat. You're uh, disconnected from a toilet where things just disappear. Uh, so you really have to take care of the essentials a lot more on a boat. It's really up to you. If you run out of wood, you run out of gas, you run out of water, your toilet's full, you can get end up in a pretty nasty situation, which can be avoided, but it guaranteed whenever you're in the morning, you're really tired, you're trying to make a coffee, that's when the gas is going to run out. When you're in the middle of a shower, that's when the water's going to run out, and when the beast from the east hits, that's when your firewood's going to run out. So... You've got to balance all of these kind of plus sides, the beauty of being free and moving up when you want and being in touch with the environment for those moments of frustration when, you know, the life really is, it's a struggle sometimes. That's, yeah, definitely. But that also leads on to what is one of the most important parts about living on a boat, and that's the community that you live in. So today I was out with a bunch of people who live at Causeway End Basin on their narrow boats. And it was a really nice kind of representation of the cross-section of the canal community. All different types of people from different backgrounds, different ages. And the thing is, when you're all on your narrow boats, you can't really tell what people's background is. It's not like when you live in a really posh housing estate versus somewhere that doesn't cost as much money. You, you just can't really tell. And because it can be quite a harsh lifestyle, the community always pulls together. People, you know, the, the minute you've run out of something, someone's there to help you out and to give you something that you need. Uh, I remember the first time we ever broke down on our boat. Within about half an hour, there was a random boater we'd never met before. His head was in the engine making sure we were sorted and we're all fixed up and good to go. So you really can't underestimate how important it is to have a good community surrounding you. And certainly if you choose to live on a boat, that's one thing that's pretty guaranteed you're going to have a lot of people who they don't need to know you that well they're, they're going to have your back for you oh, come on another one <laughs> hope you found that insight into living on a boat on the canals in scotland interesting if you'd like to find out a little bit more about the project we have at narrowboat farm to do with creating our own moorings you want to check out communitymoorings.com. Community Moorings Scotland is a charity that we've set up to try and make this thing happen and you can keep up to date there with everything to do with that. If you're interested more in general about living on a boat, especially in the canals in Scotland, you should check out the Scottish Canals website. But the one thing I would suggest is go and speak to people on boats who are actually there and doing it. You'll find if you go to one of the places along the canals where people are living on boats, they'll be quite happy to have a quick chat with you about what it's like and you can find out for real the issues and whether it suits you. If you're very, very tempted, well, another thing I would recommend is to maybe hire a boat for a holiday so you can really get used to what it's like with the day-to-day -day living on a narrow boat. Uh, we're going to be getting back into the farm action next with the vlogs here at Narrow Boat Farm. We're going to have the hen house build is up next so thanks again for watching please hit the subscribe button share the video among your friends and we'll see you soon for the next installment